we've seen a lot of graphics cards launch. Now, the expectation would be that the market would change significantly, but did that happen? But the 4080 is super costing the same as a 4080. That's what we're going to be going over in this video today, as well as breaking down every single price tier to see what the best deals are in general for graphics cards right now, as well as we'll be looking at the used market to see what other deals you could be getting. Although you're going to see later in this that they are always the best. The new cards are the RTX 4070 Super, the 4070 Ti Super, and the 4080 Super. Is it the original 4070 Ti? is now obsolete it's not being made anymore and the original 4080 is not being made anymore but these are the prices that these cards launched at we've also seen another card from amd rx 7600 xt now this card's coming in at 330 dollars and it does have some interesting aspects like 16 gigabytes of eram at a cheaper price point so that'll be fun to check out too but let's first start off with the bottom of the stack we've seen a new card come out is the rtx 30 50. It might be wor worth it for some people, but generally speaking, this card at $180 and 6 gigabytes of VRAM when even lighter games at 1080p are starting to get close to that 8 gigabytes mark. Some neat parts about it is that there might be some models don't have a power connector on them. So like you don't need a beefier power supply in order to use it. But there might be some ones that are low profile to fit into smaller cases or something like that. For most people, 30, 50, 6 gigabyte is going to be a pretty poor value card. But what is a more reasonable value is actually something from AMD at this entry level price tier. Now you might be wondering is like, oh, $200. This is still a lot to spend on a graphics card. The thing is, if you go anything below this, if you look at anything like an, a 1650 from Nvidia, this card costs like $160. It just generally isn't that good a value, even at that price point. Like the performance just isn't there. As well as AMD does offer like a 6500 XT at like $140. This card is still bad value and not really recommended because you get almost double the performance of that card for one that costs less than double the price. So the 6600 is where at $200, that graphics cards start to get kind of interesting, kind of decent value. Now there's a little bit of other competition from Intel with the A750. A750 is generally a pretty good deal as well. Tech power up. I know this isn't the the best representation, but here's the RX 6600 from AMD on the chart that the 6600 and the A750, it says that the A750 is faster than this card. The thing about with Intel graphics cards is they're still kind of in their infancy. In some cases, I mean, I have both these cards, I've tested them, but most of the time it is usually about the same speed as the 6600 or a little bit slower, or in some cases where the drivers aren't doing right, it just is a ton slower than the RX 6600. And them both having eight gigabytes of VRAM and stuff, I would honestly just opt for, especially at this budget range where you're like, you're probably not gonna have any other options to use. Like this is probably your only GPU. I would err on the side of safety and get the AMD card, which AMD drivers, you know, maybe, maybe a lot of people want to fight this, but AMD drivers are pretty freaking good nowadays and you don't really have to worry about them. I barely have any problems with them. Now it is also to take into account, I don't know if we'll see it again, but if you are going to be buying a 6600, we've seen these cards as low as about a hundred eighty dollars before i don't know how frequently they'll ever go that low again but they generally are trending around two hundred dollars right now if you're on the extreme budget end of the market there's a few cards under two hundred dollars that maybe could make sense and the first one is the rx 5700 xt if you're willing to buy used which is i think at this price point to penny pinch a little bit it's pretty good you can get a 5700 xt which came out in 2018 but generally speaking used it seems like they're going for about 150 dollars if you look at these other cards fast if we just look at this compared to the 6600 a 5700 xt and from my testing too is actually a little bit faster than the 6600 for a cheaper price point like 50 dollars less or almost 60 to 70 dollars less at times now the other option below 200 dollars that i would actually recommend is the rtx 2070 super this also came out in 2018. Yeah, the 2070 super is now going for about 200 dollars on the used market now this card if we look at the stats too is actually if tech power ups accurate i don't own this card to test it it's about 20 percent faster 6600 where it's costing about the same i think in a lot of cases that the 2070 super and the 5700 xt were pretty neck and neck in terms of performance it's not, it is an nvidia graphics card so you're still getting dlss 
and better ray tracing. I, this ray tracing is probably really bad on this card though, I will tell you that. But the used market isn't extremely competitive. Like there's definitely an argument to just stick with the new platforms with the 6600 um, because the 6600, you're still gonna be getting pretty reasonable performance. These other cards are faster on the used market while also getting like warranty and be able to return things and all that stuff that I get the peace of mind. And it's on a newer generation so drivers can be supported for longer. If you do have the money to step up just a little bit more, you can get a lot more performance. So $20 more currently on the market right now, you can get an RX 6650 XT, okay? And this car is only $230. It is a little bit more expensive, but when you look at the performance numbers, the 6650 XT is like 25% faster than the RX 6600. And that is not 25% more money somewhere in the range of like 16% more money. I would be leaning towards getting the 6650 XT. Now this car kind of goes in and out of like that cheaper price point. You can see a lot of the cars for the 6650 XT are around $250. And that's not where I would quite recommend it anymore. The only other thing to take into account is what other options from NVIDIA are around this like $300 or $220-ish to $230 price point. And that's the RTX 3050. We talked about the six gigabyte version of this card just a little bit ago, but the eight gigabyte one goes for like $220 benchmarks show that it is not a very good deal okay i don't have this one to test unless you are absolutely dying for rtx features like you're using this in programs that need like better ray tracing performance or you need dlss then maybe it's worth considering but i really don't think it is the argument would be is that dlss is a better thing for gaming but most people if like these cards are only really fast enough to play at 1080p the dlss upscaling at 1080p it looks pretty bad, but I would prefer to just get a faster card to start. Next up is like, if we jump up to like $250, AMD's 7600 starts to make a little bit more sense. Like if you can't get a deal on the 6650 XT at $230, this card performs about the same and it's only like $10 more than what the 6650 XT is generally going for. But you also get one thing that's, that is an advantage because you're on AMD 7000 series and that is AV1 video encoding. I think for most people, the 7600, if it's only $10 more, the 6650 XT makes the most sense. Now we're starting to get into that around that $300 price point when we jump up to the RTX 4060. Now this card isn't all that exciting, even close to $300. We can see that finally the 4060 has taken a little bit of a price like drop. It has adjusted a little bit, and that's probably because of another card that's around $300 too that we'll talk about in just a second. At 1440p, you would probably want to take advantage of quality upscaling, and Nvidia's graphics card does give you the ability to use DLSS, which does look better. I have videos on this, and in terms of performance, it performs really similar to the RX 7600, but you get better upscaling. I don't think it's an automatic buy because we're at a budget end of the market where every penny could definitely count towards your GPU. The 7600 does give you better price to performance, but the 4060 might give you enough features with DLSS if you want to play at a higher resolution to make sense. Now, what you might notice is that all of these cards under $300, freaking $300. <laughs> all of these cards have eight gigabytes of VRAM. You, you've heard all the stories, eight gigabytes of VRAM. It is it is a crime in 2024 with, the, with these games. And if you go over eight gigabytes, it could end up stuttery. It could crash. It could just not load textures and look, the game could look like garbage because you don't have enough VRAM. There is like a, a consideration to want to get more VRAM at under $300 or around $300 price point. Well, from NVIDIA, the RTX 3060 is still being sold. <laughs> it's literally the same price as the 4060 right now at about $285 and has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. But it's not that far behind, like 80 FPS on the 3060 compared to like 88 or 90 FPS at 1080p here compared to those other cards. For about the same price, 12 gigabytes of VRAM on that card could make sense to some people. They do make an eight gigabyte model don't buy that one. Don't buy the eight gigabyte model. It is a lot worse. It's more than just VRAM. It has cut down cores and it's just it's just a complete mess. So don't buy the eight gigabyte version of this card. You do have the new option from AMD and that is the 7600 XT. The only difference from this card from the original 7600 is that this card has double the VRAM. 
The VRAM is the same speed and there's the same number of cores on the card. And the 7600 XT, it's not that much faster than the other cards. This is at 1080p. If we jump to 1440p where you think the VRAM would be more useful, there's only a three FPS difference between the original 7600 and the 7600 XT. In terms of price or performance, this card isn't very good, but the only reason you buy this is if you're scared that you're gonna push over that VRAM buffer, which is definitely a valid concern for a lot of people. I just don't think that this is the, the best pricing for this card. It costs it as much, like $300, then it would be make sense, but it's $330. You can also get more of than eight gigabytes of VRAM on other cards here. So the 6700 XT, 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This is AMD's last generation card. If we look at this here, 7600 XT, their last generation card, still having more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, is faster than this new card. The thing about it is we've seen in the past that the 6700 XT would go below $300 kind of frequently or around $300 is it seems like with, with their new graphics card, AMD with their 7600 XT, they're waiting until this card here sold out. So we see the prices on this. The cheapest one you can get is $350, which is more than the 7600 XT. And then it goes up dramatically. That's because most of the actual models that are completely sold out now. The argument in the past is that at around this $330 that the 6700 XT is your best price performance. Honestly sucks because now we're getting worse value for the same price because now the 7600 XT is here, but you can see the 6700 XT is ahead of it at 76 FPS. So it's genuinely faster on the older card that used to cost the same, but now AMD is offering us a card that gives us less performance for around the same money. So if you're at around $300, and if you do want more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, which I think is completely valid, especially if you want to maybe dabble in with some 1440p gaming, or if you want to play the latest AAA games on higher ultra settings, your only options is to get the 7600 XT or to get the RTX 3060. But on the used market, they'd be a good deal, right? Well, not really, because I think a lot of people see that eight gigabyte problem and see that the 6700 XT with 12 gigabytes of VRAM is actually very valuable. And all of these cards are still going for about $300 on the used market. And honestly, at that price point, it just isn't that competitive. If you are willing to stick with eight gigabytes of VRAM, the RTX 3070 can make sense. This is a very fast GPU and it's going for about about $300 on the used market right now. And we look at it here against the 7600 XT on tech power up is about 23% faster. You do get Nvidia's DLSS and actually pretty decent ray tracing support. Kind of a toss up because at eight gigabytes, it could make sense to some people if you're not planning on playing the latest AAA games, which is ironic because it has decent ray tracing performance. So you think you could play the latest games, but you really can't. It's kind of like a paradox. We look at hardware on boxes data here. You can see that it just crushes everything else here hide my face cam. The 3070 is all the way at the top of the charts here at 82 FPS at 1440p, whereas the 7600 XT is at like 67, 64 on the 7600 and the 4060. And these all, all these cards cost around the same amount of money. So 3070 definitely has a place in terms of performance, but you're really compromising on VRAM. And also you're buying used. So that's something else. So this is where we start to move up in price point because the only thing in between here that I think makes sense is maybe AMD's 6750 XT. It hasn't been like this overwhelming like decision to buy it. It's a decent card. It kind of bridges the gap between the next pricing stack. Now this card is generally about 16% faster than the 7600 XT tech power up here. Pretty much you pay more money and you get more performance. You're not getting like better performance per, per dollar or anything. It's just kind of you pay for it, you get what you get. You also still have more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, which def definitely can matter. Now, if you want to compare it to what NVIDIA offers in this price point would be the RTX 4060 Ti. Ever since it's launched, has never been a compelling offer. And I know I just talked about the 3070 and everything. This card performs really similar to the RTX 3070. Um, it's not always the same, but you can see here at 1440p that the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte card is getting about 79 FPS and then the 3070 is getting about 82. The RTX 4060 Ti, it still has that eight gigabytes of VRAM and now you're paying more money for it. So you're really compromising here on VRAM, honestly. And it just seems like an upsell to get other cards that are above it. Okay, so if you're in this price class, where you might want to spend about $400 on a graphics card. What should you be looking at? That would be the RX 7700 XT. Also AMD's last competition, uh, last the 6800 non-XT and also NVIDIA's 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Let's just knock one out of here. 
Unless for some reason you're doing some kind of AI work and you need an NVIDIA graphics card with more or, or like 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I know some AI workloads need 16 gigabytes. Then the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte is the best deal here. But when you stack it up at all in terms of price to performance, this card absolutely falls apart. So let's just compare the performance. So here's the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. We're getting 94.92 to 81 on the NVIDIA card while costing about the same amount of money. And honestly, I just can't justify the 4060 Ti if you are primarily going to be gaming. This card doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It does make sense if you want to take advantage of ray tracing, but at least in uh, hardware unboxes data here, they usually don't always test the most intensive ray tracing games. The 7700 XT isn't that far behind the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. 7700 XT and the 6800 perform about the same in games. Like it's kind of indistinguishable between these cards at times. It's kind of funny, but the only main distinguishing factor is two things. The RX 6800 has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the RX 7700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, this could matter in certain cases, not all the time, but at 1440p, you could maybe be crossing over 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The only other thing that distinguishes these cards, one, how old they are. So if you buy a 7000 series card from AMD, it is probably going to get driver updates for longer into the future. That isn't guaranteed <laughs> either way. It's so on 7000 series, just like the RX 7600 versus the 6650 XT, as we talked about earlier, is this card is going to have AV1 encoding. So if you're a content creator, maybe this card can make a little bit more sense than the 6800. But let's go a little bit more in depth on the 6800 because I love that 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It gives you a lot of security. The only thing is that this card is actually selling out because the XFX models of this card are the only ones that are at that price point. And they're 340 millimeters. Now, I know for a lot of cases and stuff, you have to like check your actual case requirements, but 340 millimeters is like really big and literally if it's just a physical constraint kind of thing maybe the 7700 xt is the only option for you um this one's actually really long but there are options that are like 266 millimeters or 300 millimeters flat 300 millimeters is compatible with a lot of cases not every single one do check i also want to talk about the used market at around this 400 price point because there are some actual very competitive options so you can go to a last generation card you know like how the 6800 was last generation well for around the same price on the used market you can get a 6800 xt now i don't have a 6800 to compare it against but i can obviously look at some benchmarks 6800 xt is a lot faster it's not this insane overwhelming deal it's not like you need to go out here and it's a freaking steal but it is worth mentioning that it might make sense to some people now i will warn you that these older cards like these 800 class cards can draw a lot of power the other thing on this like three three uh, four hundred dollar price point i keep saying 300 but is the rtx 3080 the only downside to it is it has 10 gigabytes of vram it costs about the same on the used market as the 6800 xt and they perform very similar as well this card is fast enough to do ray tracing in a lot of games but that 10 gigabytes of vram can definitely be very limiting on the rtx 3080 definitely one of the main downsides it's kind of a toss-up between this and the amd card the 6800 xt on the used market because that card is more vram whereas this one you get dlss and better ray tracing support i know when a little over a year ago i upgraded my graphics card and i got an rtx 3080 because when I was looking on the used market between these cards, I was getting into a price class where I was like, I want to experiment with things like ray tracing and things like DLSS. And I wanted a card that was capable of using those things. So I went with the NVIDIA option. Now, now that I've actually experienced those things, I don't really care about ray tracing a whole lot. I don't really give a shit about it. I usually turn it off because I like more FPS in my games and the visual difference isn't that big of a deal to me. But you might want to experiment with this type of stuff or you might want to use your graphics card for more than just gaming when things like blender the rtx 3080 it, it can be really really compelling i still don't think that they're this overwhelming deal over the new market because if we step up, step up to the next price tier which is about 500 dollars, this is the sweet spot of graphics cards the 7800 xt is going for about 490 dollars right now but it's medium price around 500 dollars. and then the rtx 4070 you can get it for $530. The thing is when we compare these cards, the RTX 4070 and the 7800 XT perform pretty similarly. Usually the 7800 XT is a little bit faster in terms of rasterization and that type of stuff. And then the 4070 has things like DLSS 3 frame generation and DLSS in general with like 
su uh, like super resolution and stuff. And then it also has better ray tracing performance. So if you're deciding between the 7800 XT and the 4070, it's actually a hard decision. But if you wanna choose the Nvidia option, then you do get things like DLSS, which looks better than AMD's FSR and slightly better power efficiency as well and better ray tracing performance. These cards are fast enough to use ray tracing in games. So it's certain something to actually consider like as opposed to, you know, talking about those cheaper cards in the stack that didn't matter as much. The only problem with the 4070 is it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The biggest downside about this is it's fast enough to max out games at 1440p most of the time and be able to play them at least 60 fps plus from my experience 12 gigabytes of vram can be pretty limiting especially at 1440p and it, it sucks to not be able to take advantage of that extra ray tracing performance when the vram is heavily limiting that, that's a huge bummer about the 4070 and comparing it to the 7800 xt it is very nice to get 16 gigabytes of vram but if you are mainly focused on gaming and you don't even care about things like ray tracing, you're just after raw FPS, and you want the security of extra VRAM on your system, then the 7800 XT at 30 to $50 discount against the 4070 is a very competitive option. When we jump up to $600, I was about to type 600 up there, we start to get into where the new graphics cards have released. So the RTX 4070 Super, just released and this card is going for six hundred dollars and this is where i'm going to cover a range of about six hundred to eight hundred dollars for graphics cards this is where you have to look at the rt rx 7900 xt from amd nvidia's current 4070 ti not the super version but the original one but then there's also the 4070 ti super and this card is going for eight hundred dollars the 4070 super at six hundred dollars can make a lot of sense because it's actually worth its price to performance jump. It's usually about 15% faster than the original 4070. And then when we look at things like the RX 7900 XT, this is where it's like weird because these cards aren't automatically competitors. But if you do jump up to AMD's 7900 XT, you do get more VRAM. That's one downside about the 4070 Super is it is very fast at 1440p, but it's that same problem on the 4070 is that 12 gigabytes of VRAM can definitely limit you at some point in time. So having 20 gigabytes on, on AMD 7900 XT can make a lot of sense. But generally speaking, it is quite a bit faster than the 4070 Super. I forget exactly what I found in the range of like 30% faster or 20% faster. So it justifies its price increase, but you're also losing out on things like better ray tracing support. I think they actually perform very similar in terms of ray tracing, but you're paying more for the AMD card, which kind of sucks. And then you're missing out on things like FSR um, because DLSS on NVIDIA cards are, is pretty damn good. It does justify the actual performance, but I'm not sure if feature like comparison, if it's worth paying more to get less features. What's interesting is the 4070 Ti, the original one, is costing about $720 average. I'm not sure if this Ventus model from MSI's the best model, so maybe you won't consider that. I'm pretty sure this card performs pretty similar to the 7900 XT from AMD, which does suck. It's cost a lot for only getting 12 gigabytes of VRAM because that's gonna get really pushed to its limits pretty soon. So it is pretty fast and it's faster at ray tracing than the 7900 XT and you also get DLSS and stuff. I just don't think it's the the best deal at this price point, but it could maybe be interesting to some people that it's kind of like, oh, don't you wanna just get the extra features? Don't you just wanna make another jump up? to fix that 12 gigabytes of VRAM problem. And that's the problem with this 4070 Ti. That's why it sucks. The super version of that card ex exists. And we can see in terms of price, $800. Yeah, this card is a decent bit more expensive. I mean, like close to $100 more than those other cards. But in terms of performance, about the same as the, the 7900 XT, it does cost more, but it also has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which solves that VRAM problem the original 4070 Ti has. And also finally, a capable NVIDIA graphics card, not like the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, but this one actually needs 16 gigabytes of VRAM. At $800, it is disappointing to pay this much for a card with 16 gigabytes of VRAM from NVIDIA that makes sense with it. I'm glad it has it. It's just really expensive. After gaming performance, the AMD card makes more sense. After mul like multi-use performance, then the 4070 Ti Super makes some sense. Now, the only other card I would maybe be considering around $800 on the used market is the RTX 3090. Um, this card is very fast in terms of its performance, but at the same time, it's not the best priced performance in this range. So if we do look at tech power up, it's slower than the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti Super. So if you see here, 10% 
12% and 15%. But the only main advantage that this card has, it has freaking 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which can make some sense for people that are very into production work. They need a ton of VRAM, but also might want a game on the side. They can still do that pretty well. But I just wanted to point this out because it does have a ton of VRAM on an NVIDIA graphics card at a price point that is competitive to the new cards with its performance too, but the power efficiency and stuff like it, this card does like 350 watts. Like it's like crazy. Whereas the other cards are drawn like 250 to 300. The scary part is when you jump up to the next price point, that's where you go behind beyond $800. And it's just so, it is, it is so ridiculously expensive guys. Nvidia just released the RTX 4080 super and this is coming at a thousand dollars. Also AMD has the 7,900 XTX which launched at $1,000. So let's look at where these cards are stacking up right now. Let's start off with the NVIDIA or the AMD card. The 7900 XTX is coming in at about $920 right now. Seems like an interesting deal. The thing is, in terms of performance, the RTX 30, uh, 4080 and the 7900 XTX um, in terms of rasterization performance, the 7900 XTX is usually a little bit faster, not a whole ton faster. They're usually pretty neck and neck. In ray tracing performance, the 4080 would usually come out ahead of the 7900 XTX. The thing is, this the 7900 XTX with a new $1,000 4080 Super, you would think that if it performs a like about the same as a 4080 Super, that you think that this car would be cheaper. But that's where we have to look at something that is absolutely bizarre. So NVIDIA launched the 4080 Super at $1,000. Let's look at how much it costs. Um, as you can see, I typed in the 4080 Super. It's supposed to be $1,000. It's about $1,150. 11, yeah, that didn't sound like English, but I wouldn't exactly call this scalped. But this card is not going for its MSRP. But let's look where the original 4080 is sitting at right now. Now these cards perform about the same, the 4080 and the 4080 Super. It's basically just a refresh to drop the price to $1,000 instead of $1,200. And you can see they're also costing about the same. Here's a 4080. It's $1,175. Here's a 4080 here, about $1,200. Here's a 4080 Super right above it. $1,200. So these cards, because they're so interchangeable in terms of performance, basically all, at least at this point in time, but the 4080 Super is costing the same as a 4080. So it didn't change the pricing adjustment in the market whatsoever. Until these 4080s, original ones sell out, the 4080 Supers are just going to cost the same as them. Like there's nothing pushing down the price. In fact, even after the 4080s are sold out, there's really no reason for the 4080 Super to go down in price unless AMD for some reason puts pressure on them. That's exactly why we actually saw the 4080 Super launch and we didn't really see AMD's price of the 7900 XTX go down a whole lot. So it ends up still being the same conversation that we've been having with the 4080 and the 7900 XTX. And that is a lot of times when you're spending this much on a graphics card, you would just spend a little bit more and get the extra features and stuff. Like I can't imagine spending almost a thousand dollars on an AMD card not to get DLSS and good ray tracing support. I, I would never spend that much on a graphics card, but to me, that's really, really difficult to justify. And that's why Nvidia is able to charge literally like what, $250 more for their card. And that's even to mention that the 4080 has less VRAM. So the 4080 has 16 gigabytes and then the 7900 XTX has a kind of overkill 24 gigabytes of VRAM on it. The 40, like 16 gigabytes on the 4080 is usually enough. It isn't always enough <laughs> in very niche cases at 4K with crazy settings, which these cards are capable of doing. I'd say this is the most disappointing part about the super launch is a lot of people were excited for basically $200 off a 4080. And you can see that it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. <laughs> Could we ever expect to see these cards to go lower in price? Would that MSRP of $1,000 ever make sense? I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon because if these cards are costing the same as 4080s, it doesn't matter which card you buy, is it these 4080s are probably still going to sit on shelves because most people just buy the Super because they think it's better. It's so stupid, but like there's, there's almost no reason to 
drop the price of the 4080 Super. Just because they say it's going to cost $1,000 doesn't mean it's going to cost $100 or $200 less. Ends up basically just being marketing to drum up hype and remind you that their $1,200 graphics card ex exists because it's the 4080 Super is I don't think ever going to go for $1,000 unless you happen to get one when it launched at MSRP. All these prices have inflated to match the original 4080. The thing about it, these cards are extremely expensive, but there are some people that are just like, hey, I want everything I can possibly get, okay? And the RTX 4090 is your card, I guess. It does look like it's actually in stock now at $1,800, but this maybe isn't the best model. I don't know about 4090 models. Don't trust me on that. I do not own this card. I would never spend this much on a graphics card. We did see briefly that because the 4090 was banned in China, of selling to China that all of the models in the Western world or whatever, at least in the United States, were getting sent over to China before the actual ban took place. So we were seeing prices go up a lot. The 4090 is supposed to cost $1,600. It was at one point costing $2,000, but obviously people are still buying these because they get sold out frequently in the United States at least. So maybe they'll just leave it at this price. I don't freaking know, but people will pay a lot at this price point to get the absolute best. With these new super cards and the 7600 XT and the RTX 3050 six gigabyte, which I don't think anybody should really buy. I'm kind of disappointed in how this is shaped up because the prices in the market haven't changed a whole lot. I think the only major thing that happened because of these new launches, the RX 7800 XT is now consistently going for $500. Whereas it was price creeping up to around $530 before. At $800, at least we're getting in a 16 gigabyte card from Nvidia. That still costs a lot for that card, I think, but at least we're getting one. Not much actually changed because of the super launch. Basically all the super series was, was just a marketing ploy then to get people drummed up and excited again about graphics cards. And that didn't even seem like it's happening. I made a video about that. You can see it here that why people aren't excited about graphics cards anymore. It just seems like we're getting rinsed over and over again. It's just like this constant money funnel. But AMD 7600 XT is actually very disappointing too because the 6700 XT, which also had more than eight gigabytes of VRAM at about $330, was actually faster than that card. Now they cost the same and AMD is actually offering less at that price point. I guess they're offering more VRAM, but it doesn't really need 16 gigabytes. I mean, 12 gigabytes would have been great at, at that price point and that performance tier. So I think that card sucks too. And then the 3056 gigabyte that's coming out soon also sucks. There's so much that just sucks right now. <laughs> Hopefully I was able to break this down and give you the best options at these price points, but I don't think anything is overwhelmingly like I need to go buy it now. Try not to let the GPU market get you down. Obviously, you can still play games. Maybe tame your expectations if you don't want to upgrade right now. Maybe don't play the latest games because the newest games are very demanding. <laughs> if you want to buy any of these cards, they are in the description of this video. They are affiliate links. It just goes to support the channel and help everything out. So, hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.